it's better than zero, but that was pretty bad. The match folks coming up to you, that's a fan snooze again if you really want to, and make sure you stick around. <laughs> Bournemouth, in my opinion, but definitely probably the little bit better side on oh, the yeah, day. Agree with but that. you know the way the, uh, the way Newcastle came back at the end, they could have won it. So I mean, both teams could have probably been happy with a point. Welcome back to Black White Banter, you lovely Newcastle fans, for another match, dear. Bring it on. I tell you what, everything is going absolutely tickety-boo at the moment, apart from the home form. Away form, that awful runs a thing of the past, and today is the perfect opportunity to just tick pretty much what feels like the only box. Let's forget about Dan Ashworth. He'll soon regret going to Manchester when he realises there isn't a Greg's open at three in the morning. We don't know what he gets up to behind the scenes. I don't think how seems that keen on him. Let's forget about that. Callum Wilson... Well, less said about that, the better. Very unfortunate injury, but we move on. We don't cry over spilt milk. And today presents an opportunity to get some revenge on what was probably our worst performance of the season. It's Eddie Howe Classico today. I'm running late, as always. I've got my new jumper on. Uh, I did mention on my last video about new Newcastle sale. I'm pr pretty much a walk in Newcastle club shop, but I've gone with the blue coat. What the hell goes with green? I look like that old strip from years ago that we had, that stripey one. In the Iose Perez days, it was half a half. That's what I feel like today. It doesn't quite look quite right, but I'm going to get over there. Um, Send me match preview. I am confident there. You have to be at home. You have to be against what I would class in that category of teams of ones we should be beating at home. No disrespect to Bournemouth. You're having a cracking season by all accounts, by their standards. Eddie Howe knows a thing or two about the players. He's probably licking his lips at which ones he wants to sign, if you believe the media. But I'm going to get over to St James's Park today. If you're new round here in Newcastle fans, do us a little favour now. Whack that little like button now. Um, and what that subscribe if you like this match vlog by the end of it I am running late as I always am you must get sick of hearing that on these videos I will be speaking to some fans after so without further ado let's get this match day under way oh, really? just landed in Newcastle team news has dropped and of course if you hadn't already heard on this video by now I am late no strikers in the squad, no strikers. Luckily, I've brought my football boots with my jeans, just in case. So if you do see me on match of the day tonight, I probably just won't do very much on the pitch if how calls up on me, but I'll run around and make myself look busy. You know, maybe his knee slides somewhere along the lines, even if I don't score. I'm about to get up to St James's Park. Burns in. I, a lot of people didn't notice any else tactical change. That pushed Bruno further up the field against Forrest. It was risky, but Bruno scored twice. Kieran Trippier, I expect him to play that uh, inverted midfield role today. Let's see whether he does the same thing. I'm confident you have to be at home. It's the only thing we need to get right now is that home form. And yes, it's been entertaining in the last couple of weeks, but wouldn't it be nice if we could just see a nice quiet match? No 3-2s, no 4-2s, no 4-4s. Four just a nice steady 1-2-0 or two nil would do me nicely. Keegan Entertainer's days were good, but my god, we just need a bit of calm. It's calm. It's calm. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Here we go. Oh, me lads, you should have seen us gunning. Passing the folks along the road just as they were standing. All the lads and lasses there, all the smiling faces Gathered along the Scots were road To see the bleeding races We went to bleeding races, it was on the 9th of June 1862 on a summer's afternoon We took the bus from Bambras and she was heavy laden Where we went along Collingwood Street that's on the road to Bladen Half time, oh, God, sloppy, poor, lacking a bit of something Bruno, you know, I said he would be playing high and he's playing very high today Eddie Howe played it down his press conference it's, it's a new tactic, he's trying it It's not working today, I think Bruno looks isolated we, Of course we're missing a striker but Bournemouth should be 1 2 nil up, you could argue. They've had some good chances. Dubravka's saved us. We haven't created anything clear cut ourselves. Couple of sniffs here and there. Barnes looks bright, but just not great. Not great so far today at all. When was the last time Newcastle controlled a football match? Didn't look leaky at the back, and we have. We've looked really, really suspect at the back again. And Bournemouth. We got more into the game as it went on, but we just missing Miley and Longstaff. Miley's playing well, but we don't have that man to pick up the ball in the D 
and played around. Almiron, if Murphy's available in the second half, I'd bring him on. We're missing a striker, but things need to pick up in the second half. Come I'll start with that one. Just come out. That wasn't very good. I'm joined by Josh, who I've had the pleasure of getting the know through. TikTok, if, if anyone's on TikTok, please get Black and White Banter on there. Uh, we might be doing a bit of work together moving forward. Who knows? Josh. That was pretty bad. I don't think any fan is going to sugarcoat that any other way. We managed the point, which is better than Z. Not up first and foremost. I don't really know what to say, to be honest. Um, first of all, you can just definitely see that we're missing a striker. Of course. 100%. Of course. Um, I feel like, obviously, Gordon, he's got the pace. He does. But it's not the finishing that we need. No, not I... at all. And... I just feel he's like doing a job there. He's doing it. That's I all we can like ask. Bournemouth have came out the same as they've came out when we played them away as well. It's definitely something that we couldn't handle for 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 that definite fact, uh, especially at home as well. I don't feel like they should have kind of rocked were as much as they should have, uh, but I definitely feel like we should have came out a bit stronger. Um, what, what what do you think went wrong today? I don't know. Maybe honestly, I think it's. It's genuinely the lack of the strikers. Um, the fact that we've got no one that can kind of be there when we need to, especially in the certain spaces, you know, especially in the attacking final third. I feel like that's where we're, especially when we lose our striker, we've done it a lot this season. A lot. I mean, we've lost Wilson, and then we get Isaac back, and then we lose Isaac, we get Wilson back, and then we just keep going on and on. But as soon as we lose both the strikers, it's like, we're not a hundred percent on anything that we do. Do you think? Do you think a striker on the pitch today would have influenced that, or do you think they would have been standing around with their hands on the hips, waiting for something to happen because we were a little bit lacklustre in the final third? I, I honestly, I'd say a bit of both. Yeah, yeah. I'd say a bit of both, because um, obviously we're seen from Callum Wilson when he came back the last game. I feel like he didn't get enough enough of the ball it's an as he should as have. Well, isn't it? It's an hundred percent. He didn't get enough of the ball. And I feel like he could have maybe done more, but it's a, it's also to the fact that maybe the wingers could have done more, the centre mids could have done more. It's like, what are we supposed to do when, you know, we can't even get into the final third rather than, you know, putting the balls in the box, getting the striker there. And it's like, I feel like sometimes the, the striker with our 4-3-3 formation, the striker's a bit isolated. You know what I mean? I feel like Gordon, you've got Barnes on the wing or maybe Almiron, but he's kind of left by himself and he's ready to kind of make the move, kind of turn into the box, but I feel like we need more. I feel like, honestly, I, th I think we need maybe two strikers or at least more in-depth wingers. And obviously Eddie Howe's changed things, which I spoke about in the video at Forest last week with playing Burn as a back three, uh, Trippier as a... As a inverted midfielder as we attack Bruno further up the field because of that do you think that worked today or do you think it was the opposite to Forrest it didn't work I don't know I feel like it's just I don't think we've found we're correct not necessarily formation but structure of the team I feel like we need to find a, a kind of path where we know what we're doing instead of kind of you know we've got a solid back four We've got a bit of a shaky middle. And then, you know, I'm talking about last season. Solid, yeah. I was going to say, I'm solid being used season, very loosely. Yeah. yeah, I'm talking about last season. So, so, so my, my final question, because I won't, we are getting soaked yeah. wet as I'm recording this. I'm <laughs> very aware of that. To be fair. Um, my last question, and it, it'd be a question I'll probably throw to most people I speak to tonight. Are you worried after that? You know, we won last week. Are you worried going into Arsenal, which some people might say is a free hit, which is, you know, they are blown teams away. I think they won today. Are you worried or not? Honestly, with the way the team's going, from what I've seen the full season, I'm not worried. I'm just joined by John, who's very kind. Now that it's dry where I'm stood, stop to speak to us. And I don't get to speak to many away fans. John is actually a Bournemouth fan. So first and foremost, 
What was your journey like up here today? That must have been one hell of a trip. Y- yesterday we made it. It was. All uh, oh, right, you made it. Yeah, yeah. Made. We stayed at uh, in Sunderland last night, so uh, actually Washington, actually. But uh, right. it's a long old haul. Uh, we're yeah. actually from Gloucestershire, so it's uh, it's not quite as far as Bournemouth, but it was still a six-hour journey, and it's a fair old, uh, you know. So we didn't get up to almost midnight last night. So I was glad to get up here. Do you, follow, do you follow Bournemouth all over the country? No, no, no. We're only a more of a casual fan, like you oh, know. Right, it's, okay. uh, it's you know, I, I sort of. Um, Followed the South Coast team for for a while over the years, but it's only really been uh, half a dozen games a year. That's all. Have you done? Have you done St James's Park before? No, no. What did you think of the stairs? It, yeah, it was a fantastic <laughs> stadium. It really was. It was the stairs. Oh, the stairs was hard work, and I got almost stuck in the turnstiles. So I think I'm too fat for the turnstiles. And then they offered me a lift up, but I'm not that quite decrepit not to make it up the stairs yet. So I, fair play. You know, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to back down and uh, defeat to the fact I can't get up the stairs. Right. But yeah, so I did get up the stairs, and. Um, yeah, it's a great stadium, it really was. Right, so and uh, the good thing I like, did like about it was the fact that uh, what always annoys me, the way fans always stand up all the time. Right. So, um, yeah, yeah, and it was good that it was very tiered stand that you could... Um, yeah. I was sitting right on the, the, the side of the, the, the stand and um, I didn't have to stand up to to right. see over the top of the standing right. up people so I did enjoy that I so thought it was good so what, what surprised you about the home team's performance today because it wasn't very good from us it at was, all it, it wasn't good no I I, I, I thought that Newcastle had won that relatively comfortably I was surprised how poor they actually were because I've seen uh, I mean Bournemouth have got better this year without oh, doubt, without but, doubt I, yeah. but I've seen them a couple of times you battered us at home They've been absolutely you battered us in the reverse fixture yeah. you should have won 4 or 5 but that was one of our worst performances of the season but some of the games they were absolutely chronic at the start but they picked up a lot so uh, you know I was impressed with uh, with the way Bournemouth played I mean they, they, they give it their all you've got to, but you know I thought, I thought Newcastle for a club with such a big following with such um, big day. history it, they, they were poor, really. If I was a Newcastle fan today, I would have thought, well, you know, you, you'd, you'd expect Newcastle to beat Bournemouth, really. It's a big club against a little club. A big club against a little club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know... Point, did you think a point each was a fair result? Or do you think Bournemouth maybe edged it? Or do you think Newcastle maybe edged it? Bournemouth, would, in my opinion, were definitely probably the little bit better side on oh, the I day. I agree with but, that. But, you know, the way... Uh, the way Newcastle came back at the end, they could have won it. So, I mean, both teams could have probably been happy with the point. And you're, tra- you're making that long journey back pretty happy with the point? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Good. You know, it's um, I'm, I'm from the old ilk, may the best team win, so I don't get too upset uh, who wins and who loses, really. More important question before I wrap this up. First, You said first time over this sort of way. I know you said first time St James's Park. Have you had a ham and peace pudding sarnie? Uh, you need to try a ham and peace pudding sarnie. No, I haven't actually. <laughs> Put that on your bucket list. If you can find, you probably won't find one now. Bear it in mind. Here I am, pissing down rain. Brand new hoodie, getting soaked and wet. I don't even know why I'm doing this, but I've got to do these videos when it's pissing down. I've got to do these videos when we win. I've got to do these videos when we lose. That was shite. I'm normally quite positive. You know, with everything that's happened in the last couple of years, the injuries, we've got the fixture congestion, which was a problem. That just wasn't good enough. It wasn't. And Bournemouth showed up. That Bournemouth fan who I've just had the pleasure of speaking to, lovely to speak to an away fan. He said he came into this match, his six-hour journey, expecting Newcastle to win. I don't expect any game to be easy in the Premier League, barring maybe Sheffield United. God, I might be cursing my words saying that, but that just wasn't, wasn't good. From the first whistle... It was chaos, it was panic, and I said going into this match, I just want to see Newcastle maybe win 1-0, maybe win 2-0, but control a football match, and, and pardon the French, calm the fuck down, and we're just not seeing that. I am Watching Newcastle at the moment is tough, and yeah, Eddie Howe was giving questions about the entertainers and comparing it to that. Yeah, all well and good when you're winning football matches, Forrest was an example of that, but watching Newcastle at the moment is mental, absolutely chances, chances, one end, the other end we equalised today and then Bournemouth in injury time, we should have had the ascendancy to go on and then push a bit further suddenly Bournemouth are racing up the other end and we, we worried that we could have conceded again and lose the football match, it's just absolute chaos, it's been chaos now since the Fulham game was the last time I can remember us control the football match when we won 3-0 16th of December and that was when they had a man sent off, yes it's nice to get a point in here, Richie rolling back the years I thought he looked really bright when he came on, really strangely, some of his balls were good he looked up for it, nice to see a corner flag get kicked for the first time in what feels like about 4 or 5 years but 
that's I'm not going to say sugarcoat the cracks it didn't because we were still bad I don't think any Newcastle fan has come out with that and gone oh what a cracking point get in let's toast Richie's equaliser I don't think any fan is doing that because we all recognise that that was really 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 bad um, and yeah it's nice to not lose a football match but it felt like we lost that football match today because from the first whistle we weren't at the races now where do I think things went wrong today? I'm not going to talk for as long as this video because it is pissing down and I am getting absolutely soaked and wet. Look, I talked in depth about Eddie Howe implementing this new system. Dan Byrne plays, Kieran Trippier moves into midfield at every opportunity and then that pushes Bruno into a number eight. Eddie Howe played it down in his press conference and he was chatting his poker face like he always does, saying it wasn't that much of a big change. It's a huge change for Bruno, for this team and against Forrest... Yes, his first goal was from a corner, but I thought, generally speaking, it worked. But what I did say, and what I will continue to say, is it's risky because Dan Byrne is getting caught out. Yes, he can play in front of a back, in, as part of a back three, much more comfortable than Livermento can, but it's still at risk of getting caught out big time. Bruno, for me today, did not look comfortable. He didn't. He was so high. <laughs> I'm still unsure. As a footballer, he's amazing. As a person, we love him. He gets everything about playing for Newcastle and he's he, he's a fan favourite and on his day he's good when he's good he's very good and when Bruno is at the races Newcastle are normally at the races but are we looking at a player who being so high up the pitch looks a little bit lost I'm not sure I'm not sure maybe it was because the whole team wasn't at the races today and I'll touch on that in a second but Bruno for me not being able to pick up the ball a little bit deeper ping a pass and then move with the player and actually be back to go facing looking for the ball at times in that match I'm not sure it worked today and sometimes it will sometimes it won't that's the awful thing about being a football manager and being a football fan today that system for me did not work now Longstaff had a very very bad game in my opinion today he hasn't been great all season he was very passive not great in the tackle he was alongside Miley for large spells of that and I thought in, in the first half we were getting outran in midfield we were clustered in midfield constantly trippier players in deeper positions looking for someone to play the ball to had nobody Miley I thought if you were going to give Newcastle player man of the match which would be like clutching at the shortest of straws imaginable I would probably go Lewis Miley and there's a bit of leeway with Newcastle fans of course there is me included he's 17 he's playing way more football than what he should be for his development but he's doing a hell of a job he does not look out of place but you know talking about him in isolation not because of his age I think a lot of his passes little bit too little bit too um sensible let's say the easy pass and we know that he's capable of doing more than that in the first half he pinged a beautiful pass beautiful inch perfect out the bands where to the point i actually thought I, I went oh why have you not played the easy ball there and it was perfect and that's what this boy is capable of but we are seeing now that he's dropping into a more defensive role he's turning into the Today, for example, I just thought he was a bit safe in his passes and we're not seeing maybe some potential that might be there for him to play a little bit more expansive and you're losing that then because Bruno would be doing that in that deeper role. You put Miley in there, he's not spreading that pass. Longstaff not at the races and you've just got a mix there that's not really working. And look, that's midfield ticked off, the Bruno debate, which for me is the biggest one coming away from that match. But another big talking point that we have to keep talking about is our defence I said before the match there's no way I said it half time to Jeff I don't think Jeff watches my videos we're not keeping a clean sheet we are not keeping a clean sheet and we didn't keep a clean sheet and I just never saw that coming Dubravka got us out of jail in that first half numerous occasions lots of saves at him I'm not going to say any of them were worldy saves he had to be there he was there and he kept us in the game but the amount of chances we are surrendering to Bournemouth to Liverpool the list goes on to Nottingham Forest last week conceding two goals. Yes, one of them was a deflection. It's worrying because the same Trippier, Botman, Shea and Burn combination, Nick Pope being the only one not included in that, is an absolute shadow of its former self. I'm not discrediting Shea's performances. I think he's been probably arguably up there with Gordon as one of our players of the season. But for me, since Botman's come back, the pair of them have not worked as a cohesive unit. We do not at the moment have a solid uh, centre-back partnership and it's shown. And yes, that's not being helped by midfield. I think it's a massive domino effect. Bruno, when he's played there, I've been saying for ages we need a CDM. 
you know, you, you can start looking at the injuries. If Tenali was fit, he would be in there doing all the donkey work, all of that good stuff that he did for AC Milan. That would allow Bruno to maybe push on more and they could switch. And we saw that earlier in the season. But Tenali is not available. Joe Linton is not available. And at the moment, is it a case of that? For this game, no, I'm not going to make too many excuses because we are way better than what we saw today. But look, did we miss a striker today? Of course we did. Any football team in any division in any part of the world is going to miss a striker. Callum Wilson is a miss, but he's gone now, possibly forever. We don't know. Alexander Isak is getting back to match fitness, but I genuinely believe, as I said to Josh, who I spoke to earlier, I'm not sure whether a striker on the pitch would have, would have made that much better. Yes, we would have had an outlet, but Gordon was more than capable of running the channels. He was, he was zippy, he was pacey. He wanted the ball. He was definitely our best player on the pitch today. Like I say, if I was if I was going to give the man the match, I said Miley. I, I take that back. I'm forgetting about Super Anthony Gordon. Took his penalty well. Always a threat. Always a danger. Playing a role he probably doesn't want to be playing. But we just weren't very good today. I thought Almiron has not had a good game for Newcastle now for a hell of a long time. Jacob Murphy, when he came on, I was glad to see him back in the team. Hello, mate. It was great to see him back in the team. He did very little, I thought. Richie had more of an influence in the eight, eight or nine minutes that he came on in injury time, including his goal and a couple of good crosses than what Murphy did in, tw in 20, 25 minutes he came on. And yes, we didn't have many substitutes there. A young lad came on who I didn't even manage to see which sub, -sub it was as I was watching the match, a young kid. We were stretched. We have no strikers fit and available. I get that. But today, for me, tactically, it did not work. And that set the precedent for a really, really poor performance defensively. Forgetting about that midfield tactical change for a second, we weren't in the races. And Eddie Howe is going to come under flack. I said I'm going to stay off Twitter. The fact that Eddie Howe, two matches in a row, has changed it once a goal has gone in down that right-hand side is not covering him in glory. I'm sorry, Eddie, it's not. You're going to get some questions asked there because all that says to us Newcastle fans in the stands is that you've preempted that might happen, you've hoped that it won't, and when it does, when it's a little bit too late, oh, shit, we can't have that happen again. Let's make the change now. And that's, that's a concern. It was lightning striking twice in St James's Park in the worst possible way. And I feel I feel for Dan Byrne getting the flack all over again. But he's been outdone. And I'm not saying... I'd have to watch it back. I'm not saying it was only his fault. I think Dubravka should have done better with their second goal. The first goal of theirs was a freak. But we have created so little in that match, apart from a Richie tapping, a penalty that took ages to be decided. Haven't seen that back yet. And it was just a really, really, really poor performance up there with one of the worst at St James's part this season. Arsenal is our next match. That's a totally different kettle of fish altogether. I'm not saying it's a free hit because I'm a Newcastle fan and that is an awful logic. Um, people are saying Bruno should have picked up his yellow card today so he could miss that one. Nah, let's go there and give them some sort of match. But my God, do we have to improve. And if we play anything like that defensively, we will get absolutely ripped to shreds. And that's a massive concern. I'm not happy about that one. Lots of questions about Bruno's a number eight. Lots of questions about our defence. I'll dissect it in a little bit on my last word video. You guys are fans, though. Thanks for watching this vlog. I'm getting absolutely soaking wet, so I'm going to go for a pint. Try and enjoy the rest of your weekend. There's still plenty of reasons to be positive. We are going through the motions with injuries and whatnot. We are still in the FA Cup, and there's more winnable matches to come. That's all I'm going to say, and that is me clutching its straws with positivity in the direct aftermath of that really, really poor performance. Keep the faith as always. How are you, the lads?